I want to go ahead and welcome everyone for uh, attending Leveraging Technology to Boost Lead Conversion, presented by DYL and EverQuote. And um, today you're going to have a couple of presenters. Chris Weir will be joining us. He's the director of the Accelerated Growth Program at EverQuote. And James Angel, the CEO and co-founder of DYL. Um, we'll go ahead and um, go over a couple of logistics here. Uh, you can feel free to post any questions at any time, and then we're going to go ahead and have a Q&A at the end of the event where you can post them. And just um, to see, to make sure that the questions panel is working properly, can someone pose a question? Anything's fine. Oh, yeah. All right. There we go. Yes. Hello. I can hear you. We'll slide. Yep. Um, yeah. So we'll go ahead. I see, Paul, you've got a question on the slides. Um, yeah, we can go ahead and make those available. Um, let me go ahead and see if I can. Yeah. And uh, okay, Christine, why is it cold in Minnesota? <laughs> it's winter. All right. All right, great. So yeah, the questions panel is working. So we'll go ahead and use that. Um, thanks for that. Uh, we'll also be sharing a link to the webinar um, in an email after the event. And then, of course, uh, the big drawing for the free eye watch. So keep an eye out for that. Uh, let's go on. All right. So um, when we get started, we're going to take a quick poll just to um, see where everyone's at. And um, then we're going to go into the agenda, which is how to optimize for lead conversions, which I'm sure everyone's interested in. We're going to go over... Um, Workflows, which is a, a great automated tool that you can use to um, pursue your leads and nurture relationships. Then we'll um, have the Q&A session, and then we'll end it with some exclusive offers for all of you guys for attending. All right. Um, so let's go ahead and start with James from DYL. Hey, how's it going, everybody? Thanks for joining us today. Um, uh, hopefully, we can get some... Um, some knowledge out of here and we can help everyone in 2020 uh, build better lead conversions. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about uh, my background and then DYL, uh, DYL as well, just if you're unfamiliar. Uh, DYL was founded in 2009. Uh, 2009. Our first, um, it's kind of funny, we, we all worked at insuranceagents.com, which was an acquisition by I think Bankrate Insurance um, later down the road. So we were um, we were selling internet leads, uh, the founders here. And uh, what one of the key items that we saw as, you know, a need is that when we were talking to agents, they were always saying, you know, I can never get a hold of my leads. Um, so the first thing that we kind of invented was the lead connect, where a lead would come into our system. It would call the agent immediately within milliseconds. They answer and then it pre uh, then they calls that person. Um, so that right there kind of, uh, propelled our company just with that little feature um, to maximizing a lot of agents within our first year. And also, if you're not first, you're last, right? That's, that was our, um, you know, key motto, let's say, for the, the first year of our business. Um, down the road, we, we also, you know, we looked into more, um, you know, putting some more beef behind the system where the automation is key, right? Um, we're, we're always practicing, even my sales team, that you can't just give up after one to two to three calls. You need to build up a game plan to maximize the communication towards those leads and never give up, right? Until that person, you know, what we kind of say is if that person says, never call me again, then don't call them, right? But before they, if they don't say that, then they're a lead until you try to close them through the, through the life cycle. Um, around 2000, um, 14, we, we saw a major struggle with insurance agents where they would have these old traditional um, uh, phone systems where each each individual didn't have their own like single line. So like, let's say that we want to click the call, it wouldn't go to their exact line. So what we started doing is building our enterprise phone service. Um, uh, I'm pretty sure all these insurance agents are talkers. We are too. And, you know, the main thing is that you're on the phone a lot. And to help ease that in, we try to build robust tools around trying to never manually punch in a number ever again. I got fat fingers. I hate it. So everything in our system really just streamlines that you don't have to call ever. Even your appointments, they call you. Um, and once text messaging, you know, started getting popular with the millennials and um, I'd say around 
roughly around 2000, you know, 10, 11, it was, it was a little popular, but what happened is um, we, we looked in investing into text messaging because the open rates are uh, clearly better. You know, it's right in front of their face and uh, you know, it's a response time within three minutes, emails kind of going dead. Right. Uh, so we really put a lot of money investment into our uh, messaging platform where one of the cool tools that we have is that you can upload PDF. It turns into an image. So if you have a quote, they can see it right there in front of their face, right in their text message history uh, with iMessage. Um, 2017 came around and we were, we were looking, we have all these cool tools. We text, we email, we call, but we didn't have a systematic way to actually um, use those features in conjunction of like a workflow. So what we did is build workflows where there's systematic plans to, um, you know, reach that person within a year, two years, however long you want, and, you know, trying to build steps to get that person on the, the phone to quote or, you know, follow up after a customer, you know, let's say six months renewal because we want to keep those people on board. We built that a systematic process where you can add text calls and emails into a, and into a workflow. Um, as of uh, to, uh, January 1st, 2018, our system, um, we have around 1,900 agents. We have processed over 33 million leads. Um, so we kind of know a little bit about how leads work in our system, um, you know, how people, how many contacts they've made, how many times that uh, they're bad, or, or, you know, basically you can see everything, all the history from the inception of the lead itself. Um, you can go to the next slide. Thank you. Um, this is just one of the, uh, you know, we have 80 features. So what we, what DYL is, is that we're, we're a sales platform uh, with a phone service. So it's, it's think of like best of both worlds. We're a phone provider, enterprise phone provider, and we're a sales system that combines that technology. Um, we also have, you know, some robust lead management um, tools. One of the things that we really looked at is, you know, for larger agencies buying a lot of leads, you need a really good route, um, a lead engine, where how our engine kind of works is that the lead comes in, you can set directives like, how many, um, does it call everyone? Or does it get auto assigned? What if you have multiple offices? Well, we can we can route by zip code to that specific offices if you have four, because you want to be more local, maybe bring the first, uh, that consumer into the shop. Um, so what we've done is, you know, routing and distribution was a big part of our success for, for larger agencies. And we implemented that just in 2017, where um, there's a couple ways that can push those leads to your sales teams. Um, you can go to the next slide. Right here is just a couple things that I want to just go over for like definition uh, purposes, you know, the lead generation um, you know, tracking prospects through sales funnels, some of the things that we're going to be recurring in this, in this webinar, measuring sales efforts, that's, that's huge for the sales managers out there. Uh, speed to contact, obviously, is key. Um, and, you know, some of the highlights, I think everyone should just like, before, if you have, if you're not buying leads right now, or, or you're kind of like maybe approaching that, it's really key to have a couple, you know, build kind of like your road, your roadmap, right? And what I want to really focus on is, you need to trust in the right customer acquisition provider for quality, quality, lead, quality leads and make sure that that provider is giving you those leads, but also that they're, they have a pretty good um, you know, return policy. Sometimes there are bad leads. We all know that. Sometimes your staff says it's a bad lead and it's not. <laughs> they, they, they call twice and then they say it's a bad lead. So one of the things is you need a really good quality lead provider. Um, you need to purchase enough leads. If you're going to go, sh uh, you know, short into it, don't do it at all. You need to really have at least five to seven leads per user, uh, per sales dedicated rep per day. Um, one of the things that, you know, a lot of people do is they buy leads for a month and they stop because they get discouraged. And, and really at the end of the day, you can't just throw something there for a month and, just, and, 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 and just say, it's just not going to work ever. You should have that game plan and, 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 in the beginning where this dedicated rep, how many times you're going to call that person, what, what you're going to do, are you going to text immediately? Are you going to call? What's your, what's your times of call during the day? What kind of emails are you going to send? Um, maybe a little bit, um, you know, bonuses if they, you know, for your sales, write sales scripts. I mean, really at the end of the day, the sales script is goes a long way. Just making sure that you have, you know, Hey, introduction call. And then, and then, 
you want to make sure that you have a follow-up process with those communication scripts. Um, we do have some sales scripts on our website. I definitely would, um, I don't know where they're at. Uh, I think they're on our blog, but you should definitely download them. They're very key and they're tailored towards insurance. Some of the best insurance agents use those uh, for their sales teams. Um, one of the key things too is having a right technology. Even if you don't have technology, back in the day, you, you could still have a process, have that roadmap, put it on a Word document, build that roadmap, and then turn put the technology behind it to boost that uh, plan even, even further. Um, and then also text message is key now. It's, it's just, you have to have it. It, it. It's a game changer. And the reason why I say this is, um, you know, a lot of people are working during the day, but they read text. And let's say that they fill out a form, just scheduling an appointment and communicating through those channels, just the basic communications to set up an appointment or basic needs text message is really your best friend. Um, embrace it. Don't be scared of it. Um, and then for sales managers, what we're going to go through a little bit later down the road, and, and we'll go into our system as a quick, real very highlight overview of our system, is we really want to measure everything. And like I said, you know, if you're going to try it out a month and never try it again, don't do that. Try something, work it two weeks to three weeks, and then look at the KPIs to then Further your game plan and see where your 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 there's maybe holes in the in in the tire or where where you need to go next, right? So really, at the end of the day, is that if you just throw something out there and think it's going to work, it's just not going to happen. You need to really look at the results to say, hey, maybe this area code is not a good area code to prospect. Maybe my sales people need work. And you know, some of the great features part of our system is the call recording. It is just you know, when we're training our sales guys internally, um, it really is key that we listen to their calls, guide them. We have a whisper barge um, a mechanism as well. So you can even be on the phone with them while you're guiding them through the sale. And it's really key to make sure that your sales people are not saying, hey, these leads are just not working. And then what, what happens is that you look into it and it's that they're not working it hard enough. Um, so make sure that we measure and accountability for sales reps. Uh, you can go to the next slide. Yeah. Um, and before we go to Chris, too, we had a poll that we wanted to um, share with everybody. So I'm going to go ahead and release that. Launch the poll. Uh, yeah. If you guys could go ahead and just out of curiosity answer the poll and then we'll um, go ahead and share a quick fact that we happen to have. Great. Okay, looks like uh, we got a lot of people going. Um, all right, I'll go ahead and close the poll. And let's see the results. All right, so how many call attempts do you make before giving up on reaching a prospect? Majority of you, um, it looks like anywhere from four to six is where it ends. And then we got 31% uh, at 10 plus, which is great because um, it turns out that according to some statistics, uh, it takes about eight calls to reach a prospect. So if you're giving up before eight, then you're probably giving up too soon. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and hide that and just go back to slides here. All right, Chris, you want to go ahead and take it from there? Yes, absolutely. Thank you, Phil, and thank you, James. Sure. Uh, hey, everyone. Uh, my name is Chris Weir. I'm the director of the Accelerated Growth Program here at Everquote, or AGP as we often refer to it. I stood up this program from scratch uh, about a year ago. I'm very excited to tell you all more about AGP, where we are today, and what our goal is in hopefully partnering with many of you folks tuning in today. Um, so for those of you who aren't familiar with Everquote, I'll provide a high-level overview of who we are as a business. And for any customers who are listening, I'm sure there's some value in getting to know us a little bit better. So Everquote is 
officially the largest online insurance shopping marketplace in the United States. We're based in Cambridge, Massachusetts. Uh, it's cold up. It's cold up here too for whoever was in Minnesota. Uh, and we as a company are 265 people today and, and counting. So we're grow growing pretty rapidly. We have two primary sides of our business. Um, one is very heavily focused on traffic acquisition and the consumers shopping online for insurance. And the other is geared towards the distribution of those consumers and essentially finding the right home for them. So getting them in touch with an agency uh, that we partner with. As a marketplace, we get over 10 million consumers who visit EverQuote each and every month. And over time, we've generated 35 million quote requests from, from those consumers who are actively looking for coverage. On the other side of our business, uh, we work with over 160 different insurance carriers on our platform, and that consists of over 7,000 individual insurance agencies like you all who are connecting every day with the consumers who are looking for coverage. As a business, we were started just a year after DYL, so we were founded in 2010, uh, and our growth over the past decade as a business and our successful partnerships with our agents allowed us to IPO uh, in June of 2018, and we're now a publicly traded company. If anyone wants to follow along, our ticker is with NASDAQ, it's EVER, just E-V-E-R, so it's pretty exciting as of late. Uh, and that's a little bit about who we are. Again, our goal as a business is, is truly to be the smartest, most efficient way for people to shop for and ultimately purchase insurance to protect life's most important assets. We feel as a business, the best way to do this is to connect those people in real time to an insurance agency who's looking for someone just like them. So then the question to us becomes who exactly is the right agency with which we should connect those consumers. On the next slide, Phil, uh, I would argue that in this internet driven era, the ideal agent fit for an EverQuote generated lead will be four things. Uh, so these four on, on the slide, what do they really mean? So first and foremost, as James was getting into, we want to work with people who are process oriented. In order to work internet leads, a good sales process will be vital in an agent's success. How quickly are you able to dial the leads? What do you do if that consumer doesn't answer? How many times should you call a lead? What happens when you contact, quote, buying these leads? Uh, as a business, since we've worked out with over 77,000 agencies, um, it's very clear that our most successful agents do certain things when working a lead every single time. So this has given us a, a unique position of being a bit of a subject matter expert, and we're able to work with our partner agents and their staff to train based on the best practices that we know work. Successful agents are going to be tech enabled, right? Many of you guys today are using DYL, and I'm sure you can speak to how your productivity per employee is exponentially higher than it was in a world without DYL. It's a platform that can fulfill all your needs as an agency, and, and when working with internet leads, it will ensure that nothing falls through the cracks, right? You're getting to every lead every single time. If you are not using DYL, I would just urge everyone at least to hear them out, reach out to them after this webinar, uh, whether it's them or another lead management system, we really think it's a, a key indicator for success when working leads. Uh, next, successful agents we see are going to be uh, built for scale. So this one's pretty plain and simple. If you're gonna grow and internet leads are going to be part of what fuels that growth, you'll need the staff to work the leads. And then lastly, uh, in this internet era, successful agents are going to be ROI focused. Growth is a great thing, uh, but what's really good is profitable growth. As you invest in any marketing source, really, and internet leads included, it's always going to be important to understand kind of the metrics that are associated with these campaigns that you're running. So our goal is, you know, not just to send you leads and hope they work. We want to understand the metrics that are important to your business, what your growth targets are, and we want to manage our partnership based on whatever we can do to hit those targets. Uh, that includes price. You know, price per lead is, is driven by agency's goals with EverQuote, 
and and that's another area where DYL is going to be valuable in this type of partnership is it can track your your measure, track and measure your success and your performance based on the metrics. So as a result of understanding what type of agency is going to be successful working with leads in this era, we decided to about a year ago build out an entire program and business unit dedicated to working with agents who fit this profile, which is AGP. Um, so next slide, Phil, please. We designed AGP uh, as a very unique partnership opportunity for large agencies seeking basically aggressive growth. And with that comes a few things. So as an agency in growth mode, AGP is going to provide you with a consistent pipeline, uh, a volume of leads for your producers to work through, hopefully using DYL. And all these leads, just to be clear, will automatically flow and populate into your DYL system, which makes life as a sales producer very easy, very efficient. Uh, and again, the partnership is based on a predictable monthly investment from the agent side in return for ROI and goal-based pricing from Everquote side. So we understand investing in a high volume of leads, you know, getting a, a substantial amount of leads per day can definitely add up in terms of cost. And our team is 100% dedicated to negotiating that price per lead. That's going to make sense for you, for your agency. As remember, you know, the goal of the partnership is, is to get to a place where you see profitable growth. So as I mentioned early on, uh, we started the program about a year ago. I wanted to show some context in terms of kind of where we are today. So you can go to the next slide, Phil. We have made great progress in the first year of AGP. We've gone from zero to 350 total agents in the program to date. We now have 28 full-time, so 28 out of those 265 employees at Everquote are entirely dedicated to AGP alone. This is sales folks, business consultants, project managers, product managers, engineers, uh, the full gamut all working to make this partnership run at a very high level. Uh, and based on the data that we received from partners like DYL, we've delivered 32,000 bound policies to our AGP, AGP customers in this first year of the program. That last piece, I think is super important, the data. Uh, on the next slide, if you haven't picked up on this yet, we here at Everquote are very data-driven. We're obsessed with data. And so we're lucky to have this partnership with DYL because I think they're wired in a, a very similar way to us as a business. Uh, our integration, so lead flow, the integration with DYL allows for a seamless flow of leads and data that create essentially this really cool feedback loop. So how that works basically is we generate, Everquote generates a quote request from a consumer or a lead as you guys know it. And that lead data is then passed directly into your DYL system so that your producers can work out of it. As they work that lead, as they mark the lead status, whether they contact, quote, bind all the disposition statuses, that data is then passed automatically back to Everquote so that we can analyze your success, how our leads are performing for your agency, uh, and, and help you make measurable changes to the accounts. So it's pretty awesome in theory. Uh, it is a little bit over my head even, admittedly, but what does that mean for you as agents, for you as customers, when you're using someone like Everquote as a lead vendor? Um, Phil, next slide, please. It means basically that we then take all that data, all the analysis based on your lead performance to drive up and increase your ROI. Uh, we have an entire team uh, at Everquote of business consultants, which are essentially customer service reps on, on steroids who use this data for every single AGP account we have every day to make these measurable impacts. So every customer in our program has one single dedicated business consultant assigned to their account. And that person's en entire job is to work with you and your team to maximize the results of the leads that we're sending to your office. 
this guy, handsome fella on the left that you see on the slides, his name's Eric. Uh, he's one of our current business consultants on our AGP team today. On his right is a very real life example of one of his accounts. Uh, this is uh, on this account in, in their first few months of the program, Eric was able to work with the customer, use their disposition data, drive their decision making to optimize the performance of the leads, like I mentioned. And the result here was a 60% reduction in this agency's cost per buying, just in the first few months of the program. I have countless other proof points and also some case studies just like this one, uh, which I can also offer you on our blog and resources page. Um, but I hope to build you know, partnerships like this with all of you. I hope it shows and highlights the impact a true data-driven partnership can have on your success with a lead vendor. So I'll stop there and, and pass it back to James. But as Phil mentioned, if you guys have any questions, please uh, please write them in the section. And I appreciate the time. Great. Thanks, Chris. All right, James, take it away. Hey, excellent. And one of the things that I wanted to really touch on um, with our partnership, which is great, is that since we passed that data on disposition data, um, in the insurance world, there's there, like like Chris was kind of alluding to, there's you know they have 33 million hits, right? And where they're tracking, they they probably have thousands of websites, and they also have maybe other um, downstream or downstream providers that push up to them. And what's key is tracking that information. And if there is, you know, one of the things I think I was talking to the VP over there is that if we see a lot of attempts. You know, uh, Chris, you can probably chime in a little bit too. If we see 20 attempts, right, and there's no there's no action, they didn't pick up or anything, so you know, Everquote would be more willing to work with with a provider like us, saying, hey, not just saying, hey, I called that lead 20 times. They actually see that they called uh, 20 times from our system and dispositions to work with you on a better plan and maybe given some refunds that might be due, right? So that's one of the things too. I think really that uh, the partnership goes. Um, a little bit further is that if you can show that you're actually doing what you're supposed to be doing, they're probably more willing to work with you on building a better plan and giving maybe discounts in the future or maybe credit back. Cause, and, and it helps them too to track those, those downstream providers to maybe eliminate them from their, their, their entire makeup. So that's, I think that's one of the key things with the partnership is that they can only get better with their downstream providers, where they're generating the leads, and also work with you if you are working those leads properly. Um, so going back to some of the uh, how to optimize lead conversions, and, and it's really is key, is, is you got to really be on top of it. You know, like the early bird, uh, you know, gets the worm. It's very key to be first, um, but you definitely want to be last. <laughs> let's, let's put it that way. And there's a lot of tactics and tactics into that where, you know, you need to build that trust from the first call and um, independents are a little bit better because they have maybe multiple insurance, um, uh, different options for that agent or that consumer. But one of the key, key things is that if you show persistence, you show, uh, you know, professionalism um, and that you're not just trying to sell, you know, an expensive policy, but, you know, perfect example is, um, I should have done this before. My insurance agent maybe should have informed me where, you know, I had to buy a rental car after a wreck for $500 on my pocket for the last two weeks. These little things that will go a long way if you can put those measurements and say, hey, if you get in a wreck, can you afford, you know, a rental car for $500 for two weeks? Is that worth that $10 extra a month? You know, those little things that really go a long way. Um, also, coming back to more of the automation uh, side of it is that you want to make sure that you call five to seven times within a two-day window. Uh, I think Phil, you know, said it was uh, around eight to nine times to, to reach the lead. Um, one of the key things that I know for sure is that 22% of leads close eventually with consistent long-term follow-up. Um, if they go to another provider, that doesn't mean that you can't get them back eventually. Um, and I'm going to show you a little bit um, some techniques. I know some of, there's some DYL clients here, some techniques that we use. Internally, if you go to another provider like a lead manager, how we try to get you back maybe out of your contract and stuff of that, as you know, you would be getting out of that six month uh, window if it's a renewal policy, right? To hit them up right before that, that policy um, and uh, get back into the communication and try to get them a requote. 
um, insurance always goes up. So, and, and differs from state to state. So you should always be trying to follow up to close that in the future. Um, one of the key things too, is that you should at least do 10 calls, 10 calls, two texts, three emails. And from that point on, maybe put in a longer term, but you have to really prior, prioritize leads in general. And I wouldn't say, hey, you know, call these older leads right now and then delay the new leads that came in. The freshness is key. Once they start turning, you know, they start aging, they really, you know, it's a little bit harder to get them on the horn. It's just simple math. So really is you need to prioritize leads too with the, your game plan. Um, and that's, that's, that's a key. Like I, I think Chris alluded to, it, and I, I'm, it's very important to just have a really good game plan. I, I call it the roadmap. Um, you can call it a game plan, but write it down, write down your goals before you, you know, invest a lot of money into the leads and maybe a system and just put down your 2020 goals. I mean, we're doing it here in DYL pretty soon here, but put down your goals, what you want to reach. And then once you hit those goals, then maybe put in, how do you think you can get there? How many more minutes or time does your staff have, need to call? How many more scripts? Maybe our scripts need to be a little bit better. Why, what, do we, what do we say on the first, let's say, 10 words of the call? And what is our closing statement, right? Um, so those are key things looking for the 2020 uh, game plan. Um, if you want, um, can you turn it back to me as a presenter? Because I'm going to go through some of our system and then sure. how the disposition works. Yeah. Am I presenting now? Perfect, thank you. Mm -hmm. Excellent. So some of you might be familiar, but some of you might not be on this call. And I just wanted to go through some of the options in our system where we can set this up a little bit better for the insurance agents that are buying high volume leads. There's a couple, this is the lead routing and distribution, which is really key to our system. Um, I'm gonna go to edit here. And I don't know if anybody has, you know, tried to update this, but you should definitely try. So there's a couple of distribution types that we really need to focus on. There's the auto assign mechanism. Auto assign what I believe, I think from, from what a lot of other insurance agents is that you're comfortable that your salespeople are on top of their game, right? If they get a lead in their queue, they're definitely calling within a second and you, you have full trust in your sales team. Um, there's also lead connect. Lead Connect is a mechanism that it comes in and it calls everyone and you can, you can do a round robin mechanism or you can do a, uh, a ring all mechanism where it rings everyone's phone um, and whoever picks up answers and then connects with that person is then auto assigned. Because the main thing that you really want to do is get that lead to assign to a rep to start the workflows. So these are some mechanisms. I think Lead Connect is is more of like if your people are really not on top of it and they're kind of doing other tasks during the day. Auto assign is that you know your staff is really on top of it and they can start their own workflows right away with an instant call to themselves, no one else. So keep that in mind. Um, and then how the Lead Connect callbacks work is that um, let's say you call um, you call right now and no one uh, picks up. It'll, tr it'll re-try uh, in five minutes, then 10 minutes later, then it, you know, an hour later, stuff of that nature. And this is all trying, this is uh, kind of like a, um, a system workflow, not a user workflow. It tries to attempt that lead as many times to get them reach to then assign it to the proper sales um, uh, closer. Other things that I want to really talk about are the workflows. I feel like a lot of agents use our system, but don't use the workflows how they should be. Um, I'm going to go into just a couple. I'm going to go into the system here. And here's the workflow section. It's really um, pretty easy to set up. We also, I believe, um, there's there's other templates from other agents that you can uh, get that we've looked and kind of looked over and proof that work for um, other insurance agents. So there's some probably already in your system if you're using DYL. If you start, then they'll be there as well. Um, so there's a couple different workflows here. I just want to show you maybe the auto and home. And really, at the end of the day, it's pretty simple. If you, you say you want to text right away and you can deliver in a day. After that, 
you can say how many hours in the future, four hours after that first tax, it's going to call you. After four hours, one day later at 3 p.m., it's going to email. And this is really key is that you can select time parameters. And I would like for everyone to play around with this because emailing maybe after hours, before hours, texting during, calling maybe after because people are working or lunchtime per se. So you can kind of really customize and tailor it a little bit after you look at some results to see where, which ones are getting more attention, right? If they're replying, if people reply more at 6 p.m., then obviously, you know, text is working at 6 p.m. So then you can say, well, I'm not going to text and, and, and make them annoyed during work. I'm going to text around five and then say, Hey, let's, let's, let me, let's set up a call. I'll call you at 6 30. Is that okay? And then you have that kind of like um, communication where it's a text and a call combo. And what's really great about our system for agency owners is that in the workflows, once you set up a workflow and I'll, I'll kind of go over that process really quick. Actually, there's some right here is that, and look, I have tons of overdue. Uh, not good. Agents, uh, once a user assigns a workflow, they can see all their overdue upcoming complete, right? And the overdues are bad because that salesperson is not doing their job correctly. So it should have called yesterday. So you can make up for it by clicking on the on the phone number or uh, icon and then it'll call them. But this is really, a, there's, a, there's a report under um, for the managers and the main admin that shows what your users are doing, right? If they're not making the call attempts, if they're not making um, the tax attempts and stuff of that nature. Um, one thing about our system, and everyone else knows this as a DIY customer, the calls are always automatic. The calls are going to call you, the, the, the user. Once you answer, you uh, pick up, press one, then it calls that person. Text will pop, populate on the screen, um, and then you can edit them. Um, one of the reasons that we do that is because let's say you're on a phone call, with someone and during a workflow and you close them, right? They call it in per se. And then your tech in a workflow is going to be, hey, I'm, we need to set up our second call. Did you look at my proposal? You're not gonna look too smart if, you, if that text goes out automatically. Therefore, we can then, the text comes up on the screen, you can kind of change the game, the text message to then saying, hey, thanks for, um, thanks for going with you know, our insurance agency. So that's, that's one of the key um, uh, items to look at when you're doing workflows is that you might want to change that. You don't want to look silly if, you're, if the communication doesn't match up to where they're at in the, in the sales pipeline. Another thing that I wanted to uh, really uh, brief on is the disposition. And the dispositions are key because really what they do is that they set up, um, they're kind of like pipeline stages to a certain extent where you can um, dispo the lead um, customer, whatever it might be, into a status and it goes into a folder. So it's like an automatic folder in our system. And here's some of the stuff that we do is, it was we do lead one, two, three hot. And this is like kind of like internal. Um, then we do like not interested. Um, we even use it for customer uh, acquisitions onboarding as well. And let me go to folders here real quick. As you can see here, the dispositions, once you select a disposition for that prospect uh, opportunity or, or lead, they go into the correlating folder. And what's key about this is that like non-interested contract, I, I talked about this a little bit earlier, is these are people in the contract that like us, but they are opportunities in the past. And what I'll do is I can set out workflows by just going into the uh, system and clicking on workflow, but it can also... Um, select all of them and click on dialer. And we're a sequential dialer as well. We can call through these people back to back 138. We could probably drill that out in about an hour and a half, two hours. So all the people that are not contract, I can just right now just call through them without hanging up and see where they're at in their contract uh, life. They, they might have said it before, but you know, just making sure that they're, we're still on in their head thinking DYL might be our next provider in the future, just as insurance if you're um, you're, you might be the next insurance policy provider for that consumer. Any questions? Um, post them in there. And then one of the key things about it is, is 
tracking and history. So I wanted to uh, show you some of the, the, the key highlights of our system is that it tracks everything. This is like a timeline. If you look at Facebook, you have a timeline with your friends. Well, this is a timeline with that lead or customer or prospect. Um, so it shows you how many outbound calls, up uh, notes that you made, voicemails that you've left, inbound calls. So, and then what's great about it is you just click play on the play button and you can listen to that call. One of the cool things too about the, the feature that we uh, put that on hold is that you can add call tags now. And what's great about this is that if you have really good sales pitches, definitely, you know, add that tag to it. So for training purposes, if you're onboarding new sales reps, you can drill down through millions of calls. If let's say you get a thousand calls a day, there's a lot of calls to go through. You can drill down for all the sales calls that were, you know, the best closing uh, calls or the best approach for customer service, whatever it might be. The tags are very great for uh, drilling down through hundreds of calls to get those calls that you really want to listen to. And then the next thing is, is just the reporting. We were talking about that a little bit before is the report. It's key to look at what the activity is during your, um, on a daily basis. You can email this report from DYL. And this just shows you like how many texts this person made, how many emails they did, how many notes they, they did, appointments, demos. Demos are good, obviously. Um, so it shows a breakdown of, of all your staff members and what their actual activity is. And one of the key things, too, is talk time, uh, or I mean, I'm sorry, calls greater than two minutes. That means that, you know, if you look at leads, you can say one person called 200 leads, but they didn't have their average talk time is less than a minute, but they had like 31 connections, right? That means that they probably need a little bit of help of getting past the gatekeeper or just talking in general, like getting the per person in a five minute conversation, right? So the quality of those conversations is very critical. And if you're looking at leads, I see this a lot is that, you know, a sales rep will, you know, be on a one minute call, they, they hear something and then they just like want to close that conversation where they don't groom that for maybe a long term follow up. Um, and that's, that's very critical. You really got to listen to your, your sales reps calls. And this really is like one of the best identifier is, is call length time. So those connections that they get, how long were they on, on that call? What did they say? And did they just give up right away, right? Um, and you can see that all within, you know, a couple clicks of a button within our system. And then the last but not least report that I kind of, uh, I really like to show people is this one right here. Perfect. This shows you like all your leads coming in, like your inbound calls, um, it would show, um, Everquote or whoever you're getting leads from and how many leads were reached and how many were sold. So this kind of shows you kind of not a perfect ROI, but it shows your closing rate compared to all your lead sources. Um, and this is really good for if you decide to, and, and what I always say is if you're going to jump into internet leads, do it the right way and try to pick three providers that, you know, do equally amount for a month, uh, test run and see which ones are closing the best at that time. Um, I know Everquote is one of the highest closing rates that we have, um, but there, you know, there might be other vendors that might supplement where Everquote can't give you. So, and also, let's say six months down the road, if you if if you're buying a lead provider and their closing rate, let's say, was 20% less, six months is a long time. You just lost a lot of money. So why not just cut them off, put your money towards Everquote, um, and put way more money there because your closing rate is higher. So you, these, these are things that you need to look into. And we always look at this with our lead sources as well. What's generating the best? Ours is a little bit different because it's B2B, but like Facebook, Google, LinkedIn, very expensive for our closing ratio. Qualities might be a little bit better. So you really need to look at that and look at those KPIs in our system or any system out there to make sure that you're making the best informed decisions for your company. Um, since there's a lot of money online when you're paying uh, for leads. And that would be it. Okay, great. Let me uh, change back. <clears throat> All right, thanks, James. <clears throat> so that was workflows.
And uh, so now we're going to go ahead and open it up to q and A. I'll go ahead and read the questions, and then um, James and Chris, you guys can decide, uh, or you can both take turns answering. Um, let's see. <clears throat> we have a question from Vincent. He's asking, how can you help a small agent with one producer slash agent? Um, Chris, you want to go ahead and take that first, and then James? Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for the question, Vincent. Uh, we did talk mostly about our accelerated growth program. That being said, we certainly have a, a home and a program for every type of agent out there. Uh, so we understand, you know, not everyone can invest right off the bat uh, in internet leads. If it's a two, three, four leads a day, and you just want to start with one producer, that is totally fine. And we're set up to do that. The goal will be to to help you grow, get you staffed up. Uh, but, you know, we need some proof of concept in order to do that. So Vincent, rest assured, there is a, absolutely a program here where we can work with you know, single producer offices and we'd love to chat with you about it. All right, great, James? Yeah, I mean, for, from our price, our, our standard, like our, we have a phone system that's like $50 and a, a sales system that's bolted onto it with text messaging. If you were trying to go with three providers, you'd be looking at $130, $140 a month. We're about half of that. So that's going to give you a little bit more money in your pocket if it's been to give you some uh, money to buy um, some leads, right? And really, you, you, you're you in actually a good situation as if you're, I think you said it's you and someone else. So I'm sure that you're also um, closing as well. Um, what's really key is I would work with yourself first and try to put up a game plan um, and get a couple leads a day. Just see how they work for you and build up that game plan before you roll it over to your staff. Right. Um, I started selling insurance leads back in the day, but I sold over millions of dollars in, in for DYL as well. Um, I was, you know, had a business development in the early stages and one of the sales consultants here. And it's really key is that you should learn how everything works before you give it off to and build that sales team. Right. And I think there's no better way than starting off small like that. And, you know, Build out that roadmap first, like I said. Um, there's some sales scripts on, on our website. There's actually a lot of resources, but um, you know, try to invest a little bit in, and try to do it yourself first. Don't try to do five leads each. If you don't have the money, try to do five leads for you and then perfect what you're trying to achieve and then hand it down as a process to your team. All right, great. Uh, we have another question. Uh, this is from Keith. He asks, can you trigger a workflow based on disposition assignment? No, but um, one of the things, uh, I'm, it's kind of premature because all the DYL customers are going to get an email pretty soon. Um, Q1, we're launching uh, DYL 2.0. Some of the cool features that we are launching is um, a full CRM with products. You can put your own products in there and a full pipeline stage manager where you can put sales forecast. So there's no reason to have pipelines where when you can't put what items you're selling and how much revenue you're about to gain. But we're launching our true CRM platform, um, Q1, and it's a total rebuild. It's in the, um, we're building a Kubernetes. It's a new technology platform in the background, separating the front end from the back end. We've been doing it for about, we've been building this for about a year and a half. We also have a soft phone in, in the browser. We have, I mean, it's, it's just an elite system. Um, and, you know, one of the great things is that the dispositions will no longer be, they're going to be turned into pipeline stages where you can put more qualifying data, how long it should be in this stage. And then once you move it from uh, disposition, disposition to disposition, you'll be able to trigger those work. Uh, you'll be able to sign a workflow. So it kind of, you know, you're going down down a road and you might take another path, right? And that's what kind of our, our pipeline will do. And we also, once we're going to be sending out an email um, in uh, Christmas, around Christmas time, showing some of the like screens of the new system, um, and we're going to be offering beta in, in early Q1 for customers just to try out. So maybe you can be one of those people to, you know, help contribute to our success. Because that's, at the end of the day, we all, our system wasn't built by anybody. It was built by everybody, all of our customers. Um, we really get that feedback and we put in the loop and we try to build those features or, you know, features around how the successful agents want to close um, prospect opportunities, but also help retain customers as well. So it's pretty exciting for us. All right, great. Uh, Karen asks, can you explain the unassigned and the lead connect again? 
So the uh, unassigned is different than lead connect. So lead connect is basically trying to get that lead assigned. And what lead connect does is that it's a, it's a mechanism to get that lead assigned, essentially. So lead, the lead comes in, you can have it call, if you have five reps, it can call five simultaneously or it can round robin each one. It'll call ring three times for each rep. Once they answer, they press one, then it will dial out to that person. Once they, they reach that person, then it gets assigned. And that's where I would say start that user workflow, that individual user sales workflow, if that makes sense. Okay, great. Uh, Keith asks, is there a report for lead vendor cost per sale? No, because right now we don't have those um, inputs that you can um, – it's not the true CRM data that we can put in there, but once we, like I said, in, in the products, you'll be able to put in your cost per lead and then also what product, and then it'll, uh, the, the 2.0, when it comes out, it'll also have um, metrics on, you're trying to get as close as you can to your true ROI. Okay. And from, just to jump in from Everquote's side, you know, we obviously know what you're paying per lead and, and, we will get the data of what happens to those leads. So we work with all of our customers to report on, on cost per sale from Everquote specific leads. We may not be able to help with other vendors, but we can certainly pull those reports for the leads that we're delivering. Okay, great. Uh, Sandy Raquel asks, is there a training or video to set or make dispositions? Um, I'm sure there is. Um, we also, uh, we just implemented something that you can get a one-on-one -on -one training for like 50 bucks an hour or something like that. It's pretty cheap, uh, compared to other systems that don't even, <laughs> I was looking at one of our platforms that we use it. We, we can't even get a call, one a dedicated train unless it's 1500. So, um, you can do a one-on-one -on -one training, but there are also videos out there, I believe on our support page. Um, if you log in under support, there are some videos about this positioning, but there, I would say, you know, if you want, if you, I would do a full training on workflows, dispositions, and a couple things that you would like to maybe enhance in the system and just spend that one hour, get your team staffed, and then it's recorded, it's sent to you individually. It's, it's a pretty nice uh, a training session. Okay. And she followed it up with, can we also get access to the top working workflows? Um, these, these questions are kind of like more support. So I, I'd have to check on that. Uh, Phil, one of the things is some of these support questions, just look at the customer and then send it over to our um, uh, chief customer officer. And then the, the reps will send these, you know, send any resources and stuff of that nature to okay. them. All right. Sounds good. Um, I yeah, can jump so this in one on might... there. Sorry, oh, yeah. Phil. Uh, for yeah. Sandy Raquel, if, if you want, you can reach out to me. This is Chris directly. And we have, uh, sales best practices workflows. It's about a 21 touch point cadence that we recommend when working our leads that will be relevant for most internet leads that, that you're working. I'll be happy to send you that directly as well. Okay. And uh, this might go under the same category. Can I suspend the workflow calls text during the weekend? Um, that's a good question. I'm not uh, actually if you're closed on the weekend, those calls would not happen. So like at the top, a uh, little training mechanism. So if the call is going to be next, it's supposed to be on a Saturday. And since you're paused or your office hours are Monday through Friday, nine to five, and you're on the weekend, those calls will just basically postpone until you come back on Monday. All right, and uh, I mean, I'm going to go ahead they'll and be, read these. Even if they'll, they be, are they'll, they'll be in the overdue item. They'll be in the overdue because you didn't complete the call, and it didn't try to call you either because your 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 office is closed, essentially. Got it. Okay. Um, how can we integrate Outlook email with DYL for templates? Hmm. I'm not sure. I, that, that's a pretty sophisticated one. Um, okay. It, it all depends on like, a, I would, you, you can email me that question. Is it you're trying to send from Outlook? Or are you trying to take Outlook templates and put them in DYL? That, that's 
those are the questions I would I would need to know before I can give a proper answer. Okay, great. And uh, yeah, and we're we're gonna store these questions too and pass them out to the right people too, so they can get answered. Um, Ryan's asking, can the leads be integrated into our management system once received? Yeah, and uh, what? Well, we're we're a lead management system. I don't know. It's it's automatic. So whenever Quilt sends us a lead, since we have that integration, it goes straight into the the DYL system. Okay. Uh, Toby's asking, is there a minimum investment to be in the AGP program, Chris? Yeah, good question, Toby. There is a minimum investment. Uh, it varies based on what carrier you're with or if you're independent. Um, the minimum could range from 3000 a month to 5000 a month. And that will, and your price per lead will depend specific on your agency. So happy to have a one-off conversation with you, Toby, as well. Okay, great. And let's see. Uh, McAlee is asking, can one get Lead Connect separate? I'm not sure if that means uh, and it just says prices, but it's all it's all in one system. So, yeah, I mean, one of the things that we can do, uh, you can't get it separate because it comes with like modules where you would get like the lead manager with that and the lead connect. But um, if you're using, let's say that you're in a phone contract, right, and you can't use our phone system for now, it's fine you can use your current phone provider. You just got to put in their phone number, uh, the dedicated line. And what happens, you're not going to any inbound calls per se, like, cause we don't own your telephone numbers at that point. But what we can do is we can still use the lead connect and the callback, the workflow, stuff of that nature. Um, so you, you'll you just basically put in your dedicated line that you have with that other phone provider and you'll it, the system will generate a call to you, you answer and then it calls out um, to that consumer. All right, and uh, it looks like that's all we have for questions. So uh, if anyone else has any other questions they want to add, they can go ahead and do so. In the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and go on to the next slide. Um, okay, great. So this is um, probably the most anticipated slide <laughs> in the whole presentation. Um, so for what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and take uh, the names of all the attendees for today. And then we're going to go ahead and have a drawing and we will email you within the next 48 hours announcing the lucky winner. Um, that email will also contain the offers and we're hoping to, you know, create a little video as well to show the, the drawing. Um, and um, these are the uh, offers that are exclusive for today's attendees. So for DYL, if you call for just a free one-on-one -on -one demo, in the next uh, 48 hours, you get you get the free demo personalized to uh, address whatever needs you have. And at the same time, you'll be locking in a special offer rate, one free full month of access to all of DYL's features, plus a special rate of $65 a month if you sign up before the end of this year. Uh, be sure when you call the number to use that keyword boost so our team knows to apply the to lock in the rates and stuff when they give you the demo. Uh, that way they know one of the that things you I wanted today's webinar. Yeah. Well, one of the things that's $10 off per month for the full year. And then also we never get free months usually unless you sign up for a full year. Um, um, so this is pretty nice that you can sign up on a month to month basis and you get that $10 discount per month okay, great. for the full year. Yep. And then for EverQuote, DYL customers who sign up with EverQuote will receive a $500 in free lead credits when they enroll. So you can call EverQuote also for a free demo to take advantage of the special offer, which is for a limited time. Uh, you have the number there, and then the keyword to use for them is DYL. All right. And that this information is also going to be in the email with uh, the winner announcement for the iWatch. Okay. Um, so if there's anything else or nothing else that you guys want to add, um, I'll go ahead and say thank you for joining, everybody. Um, Chris, uh, anything you want to say? I appreciate the, the partnership from you guys, Phil and James. Thanks for the time, and, and thanks for everyone who joined today. All right, James? 
Hey, I just want to thank everyone for joining and, and taking your time and, and, and reviewing the partnership that we think is going to be very successful. Uh, Chris, thank you for joining as well, uh, explaining some very key um, elements of, of our partnership, which uh, I think are going to be uh, pretty uh, essential going forward and trying to get the best. You know, we really, I think both of our companies really care about insurance agents where, you know, you can say, uh, I'm, I can't throw dirt on competitors, but, you know, like there's a lot of people that don't. And we really look at the feedback and we try to enhance these agents to spend as lot, not spend as much and convert more because. We know if they grow, we get more money by getting referrals. And that's really the key for a great partnership. And I think it's, and it's been pretty exciting going into 2020. And just for all the insurance agents, try to, there's only a couple of weeks left, try to get that roadmap, get that game plan for 2020, start working on it because it's going to be essential that you try to do that in Q1 and uh, just write it down, write down your thoughts and then try to, you know, put the technology and maybe the lead providers around that. And uh, Happy New Year and Merry Christmas. All right. Yeah. Thanks for attending, everybody. And uh, yeah, feel free to reach out in the next 48 hours. Take advantage of these free demos. All right. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.